What's up, coders, and welcome to episode 11.1 of our spreadsheet service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. This video is going to be an extension from our last episode when we talked about the Sheets UI. Here we're going to be focused primarily on something called toasts. However, there's two more things I want to talk about, and that is one, I want to clarify something that I said in the last episode, and two, I want to showcase two more methods, albeit they, they may be redundant, but I want to showcase them just so that you can have them in your knowledge bank. So the method to do a toast is very intuitive. It's called toast. It takes a required parameter called message, and then two optional parameters called title and timeout seconds. So let's jump into the code and start toasting. So toast is kind of a peculiar method in that it affects the sheet's UI, but it's not called directly from the UI class. So it, along with a couple other methods, are called from the spreadsheet class, and it affects the UI still. I don't know if Google's going to change that eventually and move it over to the UI class, but for right now, this is how it works, so let's just see. So again, it is called from the spreadsheet class, so we need an instance of spreadsheet. So we'll say spreadsheet app dot, and let's type in get active spreadsheet. So again, this is a bounded script. All the UI things, all the UI methods need to be called from a bounded script. And if you remember, here is our spreadsheet container, and then we have a container bounded script. So we're just getting the active spreadsheet, which is right here. And then what we're going to say is after we have that spreadsheet, we are going to call the method toast. So there's three options. Again, there is a the required parameter, which is a message. And then there are some optional parameters, which is the title and the timeout seconds. So let's first just look at it and see what it is. So because it's President's Day today, let's say happy President's Day. And if we save it and we run the function toast, and it's running, and it'll run, and this is what a toast is. So it's this little pop-up down here. It's kind of hard to see, but it's just a nice little alert that you get, and it's down here in the bottom right-hand corner, and that's what a toast is. So there are some optional parameters that you can add, so let's do that now. Say toast, and let's add both of them. So let's have the message be, again, happy Oops, happy President's Day. And then the title is basically a title element of your toast. So let's just say, what day is it? And then the timeout second. So a timeout second is, again, let's, let's see, it is a number. And it is basically when the Toast appears, how long do you want it to persist on the screen? So the default was just five seconds. We kind of saw that before when we just did the, the toast not too long ago. So you can say like 30 seconds, you can say a minute, you can say zero. If you say a number, a negative number, then this means that we want it to persist indefinitely until the user actually closes it out. So let's let's try that just for now. And we'll hit save and we'll hit run. So it's running, it ran, and here it is. So here's our title, what day is it? And then our message is happy President's Day. So it's great. So this will per this will stay on the screen for as long as I don't close it out. But if I do close it out, then it will go away. So that's what a toast is. All right, now on to the next next couple topics that I wanted to, to share. So this is a toast and let me just uncomment this out. So there, there is toast that is accessible from Get Active Spreadsheet. There are also two more methods, and these are gonna look very familiar because we covered them basically in the Sheets UI episode, in the last episode. So let's, 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 let's do this first method, which is show. So this is accessed again from a spreadsheet, and basically this method show is the exact same as the Get Modeless or the um, the show modeless dialog right here. These are basically the same method, or they have the same effect, but this one is under the class of spreadsheet, and the other one was under the class of UI. So anyways, let's just show it just, just because, again, I think this is kind of a redundant. Oops, I'm calling toast again. I wanna call my function this time. Let me just exit out of that. 
All right, save. And then if we run it, then we should get, again, this is a modeless dialog. And we, we know because we can type things in the background. Great. So again, and then this is interface was written in HTML. So this is just, I guess, a redundant way to do it. You can also do it from the get UI method, which how we had it last time. But that's just something to know, I suppose. And then here's another one. So add menu. So adding menu, this is the exact same thing as, as where is it here? Create menu. So this create menu is from the class UI. And this add menu is from the class of spreadsheet. So here's here's the menu name. And then we have a, actually, let's just type it out just to see. We have a, an array of objects. So you can add in multiple JavaScript objects. That's totally fine. And they call, they call them submenus. So the name of this is going to be a call toast. And the function name that we're going to call is toast. So this is toast right here. So let's just save it. And we'll run it just to see what it looks like. It's running now. Oops, can I? of undefined. Oh, just because I have stupidly forgotten to delete that and let's run it again. All right, no errors. That's good. And as you can see up here, we have our custom function. So now if we say call a toast, it'll run the toast script and then we get a toast down here. So again, those can be accomplished through the get UI method. I'm not really sure why they have them again underneath the spreadsheet class, but Hey, you know, if, if that's what they want to do, let's learn it and so that we can be fully prepared. All right, so one the one thing that I wanted to clarify from the last episode is what I said was that these UI methods, say like toast or when we got the UI and then we ran some alerts and stuff like that, those had to be from a bounded script. And that is technically true. However, if you have a standalone script you can still call them you can mimic the standalone script to look like a bounded script and then you can still run those methods so let me explain what i mean so again this is our standalone script and this is our spreadsheet that we were working on in previous episodes so if we just wanted to run a toast say independently from this standalone script and we hit the run button again it's going to take the ID of the spreadsheet and then get our spreadsheet and then run a toast. So you would think this would work, but it does not because this is a standalone script. See, it, it cannot call this method from this context, which is a standalone script. But however, there is a way to get around this in a way. So if I uncomment this, we can get around this by setting up a trigger and we'll cover triggers in a later playlist. So I'm not going to go over all of this right now, but if we create this trigger and we save it first and then we create the trigger and now the trigger is set up. So basically what this is saying is that we're creating a new trigger and the function name is toast for the spreadsheet right here. This is our spreadsheet and then we're going to say whenever a user opens that spreadsheet, then it's going to run this trick, this, uh, this function right here. So now we have created the trigger and let's just see if it works now. So it's going to refresh. And if, if we did it correctly, it should be here. It is right here. So here's our toast and says happy president's day. So again, we couldn't run that from our script itself, but now we have in some case bounded this, this function to this spreadsheet and now it did run. So this works as well with things like alerts. So if we say get UI, even, even if we just say get UI and then we say alert and here's our prompt right here. Hit save and we run the function. We didn't have to run that again, but we did anyways. So let's just see if we refresh the page and we should get an alert that appears momentarily. And there it is. So again, we couldn't run that from, from this function independently, but now we have set up a trigger and now we can run these UI methods from a standalone script. All right, guys, I hope you learned something in that video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.